On the foreign scene now, Zimbabwe's former Vice President Emerson Imnagagwa is to be sworn in as President on Friday following the resignation of Robert Mugabe. Well, Mugabe resigned as Zimbabwe's president on Tuesday, a week after the army and his former political allies moved to end his 37-year rule. Now we hear on confirmed reports that Mugabe even negotiated with the military to have immunity as a condition for a resignation. On Skype to discuss this is an African affairs analyst from London, Jermaine Sonwolu. Thank you very much for joining us this hour. Uh, let's start with that little bit of information there as to uh, this deal now, quote and unquote, between Mugabe and the army. What would even be gained if uh, they choose to prosecute the 93-year-old man? Well, thanks a lot for having me um, today. Well, a lot would have been gained in setting an example to other um, African leaders or leaders of the world who see um, political power as their own or actually feel that it can actually be a kind of dynasty where they can pass it from one member of their family to the other to have set an example um, for war criminals who are who are who call themselves presidents who have committed so much um, evil to their people and that is what would have been an example to them to show that you cannot get away scot-free for doing something evil and that would have um, inspired a new generation of leaders in Africa to actually do the right thing because they know they will be a Accountable. Now, he negotiating with the army was actually a wise move, and I'm sure um, they will actually want to um, ensure that his exit is actually smooth and doesn't cause a lot of trouble, because you must know that um, Robert Mugabe actually had a lot of supporters, one, and they didn't want to cause any kind of violence to try and see that the military has taken over and there's a lot of problems, but also to ensure that there is peace in the land. This was someone who was actually respected, very, very well respected in this country, being a liberated liberate but now has become a dictator. He was he's also respected in the African Union as someone who stood against right and um, white oppression. So he negotiating a kind of um, uh, immunity from persecution is a smart one because he knows he has committed a lot of crimes. Well, um, Jermaine, because um, this wasn't a proper coup, um, negotiations had to have taken place and no doubt um, immunity would have been the ultimate um, condition. But um, rights groups are going to try to prosecute ministers who worked under Mugabe. How do you now um, prosecute the body without prosecuting the head? That's a very, very good question. Because if you're going to persecute um, um, the ministers, you're actually going to persecute uh, MSN Manangagua, who is actually mm -hmm. going to be um, the vice president and the president, who was former vice president, who's going to become the president elect come Friday. Um, because they were all complicit in this. They all actually carried this act out. And you can say that they were actually acting on instructions um, from the top, um, which is um, um, Robert President Mugabe. So you have to adapt with him before you deal with others but what i believe is going to happen in zimbabwe right now is that he's actually they're actually going to try and just um put an end to what has happened in the past and actually going to and just start on a new leaf and actually just in a way so to say forget about what has happened and say let's move forward as the new president who's going to be coming in um emerson Mngangu actually said that you know let's have a new democracy um this was someone who was known as the crocodile before let's see how he's going to now appease and actually going to do more good with those ticks that once bite people, would he be able to bite corruption, bite poverty, and bite um, the, 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 the pains of many Zimbabweans of the past administration away with the so called out it? And Jermaine, what could change uh, now that uh, Mugabe has exited after such a long reign? Uh, of course, like you've already established, Emerson Mnagagwa is still part of the system and is said to even have this uh, same authoritarian tendencies. Yeah, he did had uh, have a lot of um, authoritarian tendencies. He oversaw, uh, oversaw uh, he, he actually oversaw, oversaw a lot of activities that uh, Mugabe actually did. He was a defense minister, and he did a lot of atrocities when it comes to the Nobel tribe. You understand? There was a lot of persecution, a lot of deaths that occurred. But let's believe right now that if a a, a military um, leader can become a president of one of Africa's most populous nations, and also we should also believe that now um, someone who 
who was um, a, a, a Fokodau dictator can actually become a born again president who is now going to air out a new system of change for, um, for, for, for Zimbabwe. A lot of things has to be expected um, from this um, country right now. A lot of change is actually being demanded because you must know that Zimbabwe was known to be called the breadbasket of Africa. Um, people are calling it a basket case right now, but hmm. let's hope it's a basket case that's actually becoming better. It, it was it's rich in natural resources, gold, platinum, diamond, the diamond that is mated to be up to $15 billion mm. um, in, in their economy just a few years ago. It has done a lot, but right now what we see in Zimbabwe is a situation whereby in 2008 they had 231 million percent of um, inflation rate, and in 2015 it was recorded that um, one Zimbabwean, I mean, um, they, they, you had to have 351 quadzillion um, Zimbabwean dollars to just get one um, 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 US dollar. Yeah. So we should actually be thanking God in Nigeria that things are not so bad. Um, you know, we actually have to look at that. The Bible's new change. And hopefully this man who has a past of bad tendencies will come and now bring in new change um, to the country that desperately needs it. Well, let's hope that um, is to be. Well, um, Mugabe finally jumped before he was pushed. Thank goodness. And Nangangwa is going to be sworn in tomorrow. That's Friday. But something that intrigues me is um, he promised to be back to the country to make Zimbabwe a more democratic country. Do you think he had a premonition of what the military was going to do? Well, I believe he actually knew what he was going to do if he didn't actually orchestrate it um, while he was in exile. You must know that, as I said, he was a defense chief and he had a lot of um, strong allies with the military. Um, what Mugabe actually, the mistake he made was that he let his selfish ambition or, um, take over the strategic vision that he had for Zimbabwe. Um, being a liberator, he became a dictator and also now trying to let his wife, um, Gucci Grace mm. uh, Mugabe, as they said, they call her, mm. um, try and supersede him or take over him and have a, a Mugabe, so to say, dynasty in South Africa. He forgot the strongest man in power who, uh, that was actually supporting him was his defense um, man, um, um, Emerson Mugangwa, and he actually, he actually let go of that man. He fired him. The allegations that actually poisoned him and the man's life was under threat. So the man, once he was kicked out, he, I'm sure that he orchestrated this whole thing to ensure that there's an end of um, this sort of um, brutal and territorial rule in Zimbabwe. So I'm sure he had a part to play in all this. But um, luckily, the military intervened in what they called not a coup, and they actually ensured that Zimbabweans, uh, their desire had actually come to reality. Their dreams of a new Zimbabwe is actually being burnt. Hmm. Uh, Jermaine, you've also said, um, well, at the onset, that um, Zimbabweans might just move on. But uh, then you talk about Gucci Grace. How does one, how does the average Zimbabwean now, this incoming government now, forget uh, Grace? What should be done with her? <laughs> Let's hope that they will give Grace or they will show grace to Gucci Grace, but it's actually going to be quite hard because you see the allegations of, a, of, of widespread looting by this family. Um, the G40 cabal that actually took over um, Zimbabwe was known to have committed a lot of crimes, one against humanity, um, pushing and suppressing um, opposition leaders, but also when it comes to criminal offenses in looting public uh, public funds. So right now, M M Mugabe has actually said that he doesn't want to seek he doesn't want to go on exile, that he wants to die in Zimbabwe. Those were some, yeah. some of the conditions in the negotiations that he had. There were some um, insinuations that he may go and stay in South Africa, but this is a man who is very pr full of pride, and he said he wants to die in a country that he fought to liberate from um, my, white minority rule. But Grace Mugabe right now has a lot on her plate. I believe at one point in time she may just have to leave for her own safety and for her own um, sanity because she has done a lot of harm to that country and intended to do even do uh, much more. They believe that uh, Mugabe was surrounded by people like her and other bad people that tried to bring out the, comp the, the, the country, but he's not exempt from actually having a role in it. But she has to actually consider her own future um, when Mugabe uh, dies eventually.
Oh, oh, okay, um, there's a confusion there now because I was going to take you up on um, um, Grace having to leave while um, Mugabe still exists, but I'm not sure if Mugabe could have negotiated any kind of immunity without including his wife, you know, in that um, agreement or negotiation. But um, do you think Nangagwa can deliver a broad-based government? Well, um, I believe that he has to, he must, um, he, he has no choice because um, Zimbabwe needs that change right now. They are a, a country that, I um, mean, you know, Nigeria has oil, but they, they, they were an example of a country that can harness its natural resources and actually do a lot of great things with that raw material, that earth that they have beneath their ground and all the resources within them. They were a success of how you were able to combine white and black um, living um, in, in, in unity, and that's what inspired, you know, the anti apartheid movement in South Africa and all that. They did a lot of great things. So if this man is going to be the one that's going to usher a new change, a new era of new democracy in Zimbabwe, he has to do that already. The, the um, people around the world, President, um, are congratulating Zimbabwe of this transition, and actually they, want, actually they actually want to help. We know they are Russia, China, and now I'm sure the U.S. and Britain will come back and try and negotiate with Zimbabwe that was um, earlier on kicked off from the Commonwealth of Nations. Even the AU is going to come together to try and support him. Everybody wants to see um, Zimbabwe actually rise again from the ashes of um, Robert Mugabe's um, 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 dictatorial rule. They, we, they actually need it. And he actually has to now draw in all manner of people, people from the civil society groups, people from the international community, not exclude people and now have an inclusive government to see that um, he doesn't repeat what the, uh, Mugabe did, but he starts a new trend of exemplary leadership for other African nations to follow mm. too. And Jermaine, what's in it for the people? We've seen um, uh, Zimbabwean society largely repressed under uh, Mugabe's rule. And then towards the tail end of last week, uh, following that army intervention, they, they came out, you know, showing uh, really more emotions than had been recorded of them. What's in it for them under uh, the reign of uh, Umnagagwa, at least for now, before elections hold next year? Well, um, 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 the, the new president will be coming in tomorrow. President um, Emerson Mandagwa actually said, you know what, it's going to be promising a lot of jobs. It's going to promise employment. It's going to promise opportunities for all. It's going to ensure that there's equitable, equitable distribution of the resources of the land. Now, this is, as we know, political rhetoric. People always say that before they get into office. But when he gets into office, he has to actually deliver on his promise because everything is at stake. The people of Zimbabwe are the most important important element when it comes. They are the ones who have suffered, suffered the oppression. They are the ones who have suffered um, from the high rate of inflation, as I mentioned earlier. And they are the ones who have had to carry one suitcase to go and buy a loaf of bread, one suitcase of, um, so to say, worthless Zimbabwean dollars to actually go and buy one loaf of bread in the supermarket. They are the ones who have actually suffered. And at this point in time, everything has to be done to see that their rights are actually being restored in the sense of dignity and hope. And there's also food on their table. They are able to lift their head up high and say, you know, we're Zimbabweans. We, are, we can be the pride of Africa, we could free Africa, and we could be a great nation. Because there has to be a lot done for them, and it must be done by him. Well, a new era and a fresh start for Zimbabwe, and it will all begin to unfold tomorrow as Nangagwa gets sworn in as the new president of Zimbabwe. Jermaine Songwolu, African Affairs Analyst, thank you for joining us on TVC News Hour. Thanks a lot for having me.